Good day, everyone, and welcome to the virtual graduation commencement services of the Bermuda Institute of Seventh-day Adventists as we celebrate the class of 2020. As school board chairman, I welcome you, the proud parents, and applaud you for entrusting your children to us to provide a Christian education, thus equipping them for heaven and service to their fellow men. A special welcome to all family and friends for you have served as the supporting cast of this illustrious graduating class. We welcome and say thank you to all school board members, pastors, alumni, and the constituents of the Bermuda Conference Church family for you have given of your time, talent, and treasures that have sustained BI during these challenging days. A big thank you and a glorious welcome to all faculty and staff of the Bermuda Institute for your dedicated service and commitment to helping our students to develop a personal relationship with Christ, challenging them to physical, social, and academic excellence. Thank you. And finally, a drum roll and warm welcome to the magnificent graduating class of 2020. Congratulations, praise God, you made it. Today, we celebrate you and the culmination of your academic journey at BI. Who would have thought or anticipated that the changing landscape brought to us by COVID-19 would have altered our educational journey? Yet, your learning experience, even though it changed, you zoomed your way through this challenge, survived the transition, navigated your new circumstances, and found the resilience to keep your eyes on the go. And so we celebrate you and your accomplishments today, and may God continue to bless you now and always. And again, we say, welcome. Lord, we come to you today with thanksgiving. As we celebrate the accomplishments of our 12 precious souls, we want to ask you to cover them as they leave our hallowed halls. Guide their every footstep from now until you come to take us to eternity. Thank you, Father. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture will be taken from Isaiah 54, Verse 17, no weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Our dreams, nothing's too hard, the sky is 
The class of 2020 is a turning point for all seniors the world all over. The bells and whistles and fanfare that come with the usual graduation will only be imagined or held on a much smaller scale this year. However, I challenge you that instead of having memorable photos and videos of you receiving your diploma in front of an audience, you can have the determination to be a trendsetter. For some of you who may not have made a decision as to the career path, this coronavirus pandemic has opened a wide range of possibility for you to consider, whether it is in the field of epidemiology or technology for schools or communication, the coronavirus has revealed cracks in the system that you graduates will have the opportunity to fill. I further challenge you to work diligently and not take shortcuts. White, in her book, Christian Education, noted that success in life depends upon a faithful, conscientious attention to the little things. As you prepare for university or the world of work, you must not and should not compromise your integrity. Integrity in little things, the performance of little acts of fidelity and little deeds of kindness will exert a strong influence of good. Now is the time for the character development that you have received at Bermuda Institute to be revealed. Now is the time for you to stand up against injustice, racism, and discrimination. As the faculty and staff prepare to send you off, we wish you all the best. We will be praying for you. We simply ask that you remember to listen to the still small voice that will be saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Congratulations, graduates of the class of 2020 of Bermuda Institute. We look forward to hearing great things about the class of 2020 and the challenges you will be making, the changes you will be making to impact the world for the better. May God bless you. To the parents and guardians, thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice you made in choosing an Adventist Christian education to educate your children. Protocol having been set, good morning everyone. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. These inspiring words still apply to us today and speak to our academic journey as the class of 2020. Bermuda Institute has equipped us with the tools needed to build character, succeed academically and spiritually. However, our journey does not end here. It has only just begun. According to the Oxford Dictionary, char character is defined as the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Character is what makes us who we are. Look around, who do you see? I see more than just my classmates. I see individuals whom I have come to know as determined, passionate, confident, and caring. Due to COVID-19, we are unable to have a formal traditional graduation. So why have a formal traditional speech? As the president, as the president, I still wish to share a few words with you. Kamal, Kimmy, although you have all the teachers believing that you are quiet, we know that you are loud and quite opinionated. Use that strength in the real world. Speak up and don't let others mistake your quietness for weakness. I urge you to be brave and confident, even around those whom you don't know. You have something valuable to share. Make your voice known and heard by the world. Chaziah, Eddie, 
I have two words for you. Be selfish. Even though you have a weird way of showing it, I know that you truly care about everyone around you. You have a way with people. Don't ever stop standing up for others, even when it is not the popular thing to do. It is an amazing trait and will serve you in your life. However, don't let your desire to put others first hold you back from accomplishing what God has in store for you. Ziani, Ani, I truly admire you. You have a level of determination that is unmatched. On the outside, your accomplishments look easy and graceful. You are caring and respectful and know how to make us laugh. You have this determination to do good, but you are capable of greatness. Set goals above and beyond what you believe that you can accomplish. Don't ever sell yourself short or take the easy route because I know you can and will do great things in life. Tevin, Tev, you are such an unconventional individual, but unconventional isn't necessarily a bad thing. I love your confidence. You are always watching, observing, and checking up on people when they don't seem okay. No matter what anyone says, you still do you unapologetically. Tevin, I urge you to embrace your uniqueness and use it to soar to new heights. Tristan, Tris, you are quiet in class most times, but when you are in your element, you truly thrive. I have seen a whole different Tristan during lunchtime in Mrs. Tuzo's classroom. I urge you to branch out of your comfort zone. Show the world the Tristan that is vocal and confident. You are quiet and intelligent. I know you will accomplish great things. The world is truly your oyster. Adrian, Audrey, before you left to go to Warwick Academy, I viewed you as a troublemaker. Even after you returned to the eye, the jury was still out. But I have come to know the real Adrian, the one behind the boxing gloves. You are kind, smart, and caring. I cherish our friendship. I urge you to open up and show people who you truly are. Remember to always be humble, and you will make it far, not just in your boxing career, but in life. When you make it in the big leagues, don't forget us, your biggest fans. Alicia, Lisi, when you first came to BI, even when you didn't know us, you showed us your authoritative character. Although we have not always shown you the love as the new kid on the block, you will always be a special part of our class. You have pushed us to do our best and have inspired each one of us. You're not distracted by what anyone thinks or says when you have a goal in mind. Those qualities will take you far. Remember to listen to others' opinions and ideas, but don't ever dial down that drive and determination that makes you to who you are. Amani, hey boo. When you first found out that we were getting married in Bible class, you said, can I get somebody else? And I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't too excited either. However, you changed my perspective and made me see the real you, Amani Neon. Even though we had a rocky marriage and a rough parenthood, I will always have a place for you in my heart. Hubby, I urge you to not let autism limit you. When I look at you, I don't see that. I see a hilarious, sometimes rude, but kind and loving individual. I want you to be yourself without apology. Erica, you have such a sweet soul. You are our class artist. You may appear quiet, but you are definitely a fun individual to be around. Erica, I admire you. You have never given up, no matter what was going on in your life. Every day you smile through the pain, and I respect that. I want you to strive and not only speak through your art, but let your voice be heard even when afraid. Serene, Rainy. You are the closest friend I have, even though you irritate me and stress me out. No matter what, I will always be here for you. You have never been afraid to speak up and say what's on your mind. Don't ever change that about you and don't belittle yourself to make others feel better. 
Serene, you are truly brilliant, but never forget to channel it positively. Don't let idleness hold you back. Caden, Caden, Caden. I know I irritate the life out of you, but you intrigue me. You don't let anything hold you back. You follow rules religiously, and when your mind is made up, there's no changing it. When you see something that isn't right, take a stand and demand change. I am truly thankful and honored for the opportunity to stand before you today and call you my classmate. Although we have reached this milestone in our lives, our education will continue. Remember the words of Martin Luther King Jr. Intelligence plus character is the goal of true education. More importantly, we have had the privilege of Christian education to prepare us for the heavenly kingdom. Hold on to the life lessons, spiritual applications, memory gems, and theme texts we have learned during our time at BI. They will help us navigate all uncharted waters and challenging times that lie ahead. Throughout the years, we have faced many challenges as a class. From our involuntary week-long vacation, our Let Us Eat protest serene, our international fights, fun experiences on the bus, even the time when it was raining markers. But here we are today. Although it may have seemed impossible, we didn't give up. We all have had our personal obstacles that we have overcome. Let's achieve our true education. With everything that is going on in the world today, our two pandemics, racism and COVID-19, I charge you to be the change the world so desperately needs. Change the world's view on people of color and inspire others to do so as well. Although you may not end the world's challenges with one single protest or by sheltering in place, continue to make your mark. Those characteristics that each one of you holds and hunger for education gives you endless opportunities to inspire and change the world. I can't wait to see our future doctors, teachers, pilots, accountants, computer engineers, and boxers. Class of 2020, we made it. Not only did we make it, but we made it together. Thank you all for your support. Class of 2020, I love you. Good morning. James Duggan Jr. is an author, pastor, consultant, international speaker, worship facilitator, and life coach. He has over 13 years of pastoral experience with a master's in pastoral studies, a bachelor's in ministerial theology, and a minor in communications from Oak Point University. He is currently earning his PhD in organizational leadership at Southern University. Pastor Duggett has pastored several churches around the country. He was employed as a pastoral liaison for the United States Congress from 2015 to 2017. Pastor James Duggett has presented at major events all over the world. He has been the recipient of numerous honors and awards, including the mostly, the mostly Warren Homiletics Award for Excellence in Speaking. Currently, he pastors the Deerfield Beach and Riviera Beach Seventh-day Adventist churches in South Florida. He is married to his college sweetheart, Demia Duggett. They have a beautiful daughter, Noah Lilly, and a handsome son, James Duggett the III. We are delighted that Pastor Duggett has agreed to be our speaker today. We solicit your undivided attention.
Hello, family and friends, and good morning, class of 2020. Yeah. I am so excited today to be your commencement speaker. I want to tell you job well done. Again, my name is James Doggett Jr. And I know that you didn't anticipate when you dreamed of this day that we would be meeting virtually, but don't worry, that does not change the fact that you are a 2020 graduate, that you deserve celebration. We commend you today for a job well done. Let me celebrate you because you woke up today and you got out of your bed and you made that difficult journey, that arduous trek from your bed to your laptop so that we can be together today. Uh, look, I'm not judging you when June 28 comes around because this is a pre-recorded message. I too am going to be in my shorts and a t-shirt. So we're in this thing together. Let me celebrate your principal, Principal Edwards, and also Mr. Owen Simons, your faculty, your staff. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity to come and speak to such an amazing class. Today, I wanna to encourage you guys with a simple thought, there is more. Let's go to our Bible text that I want to emphasize for your spiritual pondering. This is 2 Kings chapter 13, and we're gonna read verses 18 and 19. 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 18 and 19. And this is what the word of God says. And he, this is the prophet Elisha said, take the arrows and he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground with them. And he struck three times and stopped. Then the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Syria until you had made an end of it but now you will strike down Syria only three times. The story that we just read about has the prophet Elisha in his bedroom and the king of Israel who comes barging in is scared because it looks like defeat is imminent and apparent. For the Syrian army is coming against them and it looks like they're going to be overwhelmed. Israel is not going to be able to get the victory. So this is what the king does. He comes to Elisha and says, help me. Elisha gets up out of his bed and with his, his sickly body, he wanders over to the eastern window, opens it, and then he instructs this king to release an arrow. As the king pulls back an arrow on a bow, the prophet puts his bony and emaciated fingers on the strong yet ungodly hands of the king, and together they release that arrow in the direction of the enemy. You gotta know that when you release an arrow in that particular day and time, in the direction of your enemy, that is a declaration of war. Elisha was saying, don't you dare be scared of your enemy. You better wage war against the enemy. And as the arrow is flying toward the Syrian camp, the prophet declares very clearly, this is the arrow of victory. That arrow of victory that made its way toward the enemy camp should have excited and, and encouraged the king of Israel. So here it is. Elisha tells the king, I want you to pick up the quiver right there on the ground and I want you to pull out some arrows and I want you to strike the ground. Do what you saw us do together now by yourself. So the king of Israel releases another arrow toward the enemy, then he releases a second arrow, then he releases a third arrow, and as the last arrow starts making its way toward the enemy's camp, the king seems to just give up. We don't know if he was overwhelmed with the emotions of anxiety, trepidation, and fear. We don't know why he stopped, but the prophet began to give him a stern rebuke. The prophet Elisha said, you will experience victory, but your victory will be limited because you did not release all of the arrows that you had in your quiver. There was still potentiality left in the quiver, but because you stopped shooting, you will only get partial victory. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to know that I did not come to speak to graduates who are satisfied with themselves who are satisfied with your level of success. We celebrate you and we do commend you for a job well done, but I need to speak to you who are still stretching, who are still striving, who are still trying, who are still attempting, who are still evolving, who are still growing. Those of you who are still searching, I came to speak to you today and to encourage you that there is more. The reason why this prophet was upset was because there was unused power in the quiver that this king could have utilized, but he didn't for whatever reason. Let me tell you that the challenges ahead of you 
are many and they will be severe. But you've got to know that God is with you. And the Bible declares that if God be for you, who can be against you? Which means you don't have to be afraid, which means you can keep pushing through challenges, which means when times get tough, when you have to tiptoe through the tunnel of trouble and tension, you can know that as long as you keep putting one foot in front of the other, as long as you keep moving toward your divine destiny, God will give you success. And this is why, because God will raise you to the level of success that is commensurate with the energy and the effort with which you are willing to exert. The extravagance of your success, the extravagance of your future is going to be commensurate with all of the energy that you're willing to exert toward attaining what God has in store for you. God will raise you equal to the level of your ambition. The reason why this is important is because many of you have big dreams. God has already deposited a vision, a revelation into your spirit. You have within your heart and mind these thoughts of bigger, of more, of better. And I want to encourage you to go after it. Don't you dare stop. Don't you dare get weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Let me tell you that there is more. My brothers and my father went to a Nike store one day. This was around Christmas time and my father was feeling really generous this day. So he told my brothers Austin and Milton, go in the store and get whatever you want and whatever you guys pick up, I'll pay for it. Bring it up to the cash register and I'll handle it. My brother Austin went, picked up some shorts, picked up a shirt, picked up a, a few other items and my brother Milton went to the shoe section, got some shoes and, and he got some other items and once they were done, they walked up there to the cash register and my father paid for everything. After they put all of the items in the bags, they were now leaving the store and my father started to, to laugh and as he's laughing out loud, my brothers look at each other confused and they said, Dad, what's so funny? Why are you laughing? My father responded to them by saying, listen, when we walked into the store today, I had in my mind an amount that I wanted to spend on you guys. And as you all went and got your items and you came to the cash register, the amount that I had to spend on you today was not even half as much as I was willing to spend if you would have gone for more. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get to the end of your life and be upset about the fact that you did not attempt because you were too scared. You didn't stretch because you were too fearful. We need you to know that God has great things in store for you, that you are more than a conqueror, that God wants you to rise to a new level of spiritual power, and there are great exploits in your future. You're brimming with potential, and I need you to know that you can do it. You will get there, you shall arrive, but you've got to go for it. You can't be complacent. Don't you dare sink into the level of inertia where you are now sitting silently like a statue in satisfaction. No, we want you to keep moving forward. Keep striving, keep attempting, keep stretching, keep evolving, keep growing, keep searching, keep going. Know that there is more. God is going to do a great work in your life. Today we celebrate you, we say job well done. We appreciate the success that you've already experienced, but allow me to also put in your mind this divine discomfort in knowing that God has more for you. Allow me to pray this prayer over you as you move forward, as you continue to smile so wide, you can eat a banana sideways because you can't help but be excited about the future that God has for you. God, thank you. Thank you for the favorable future that you've already designed for each graduate. I thank you today that we are receiving this word, that we want more, and that we're gonna go for it. I pray, Lord, that whatever their hands touch, that it would prosper. I pray, Lord, that you would expand their territory, that you would elevate them to a new level, send resources from unexpected places, send the support that's required, allow us to trust you, even when we can't trace you, and to keep moving forward, Lord, because we know that you are with us. Thank you for being Jehovah Shammah. Thank you for being the God who is right by our side. Now, thank you for this class. I'm placing them in your hands with trust. So take good care of them, I pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask it, amen and amen. Thank you again for allowing me to come and speak to you. God bless you and hopefully I'll be seeing you soon. And I wanna hear those testimonies about the great things that God is doing in your life because you know that there is more. On behalf of the Bermuda Institute Class of 2020, I'd like to thank you for your words of motivation and wisdom. We will take heed to your advice and apply it to our daily lives. 
As we progress on to the next chapter of our lives, we appreciate the kind words that you so willingly share, thus ensuring a smooth as possible path for us. We are grateful for the time that you have been invested into us, and we will endeavor to keep God first and foremost in our lives. Thank you for sharing our day with us. Good morning. As Registrar of Bermuda Institute, I have checked the records of the students presented today as having completed necessary requirements for graduation from grade 12. And I begin. Kamel Bean, award winner of the Bermuda Conference K-12 Award and Community Service Award. Chesiah Brown. Ziani Bergeson, Prefect of the Year Award, Faculty Scholarship, Courtesy King, Bermuda Conference K-12 Award and High Honors, the Belco Math Award, James Water Service Award, nominated for Price Waterhouse Cooper's Head Start Award, Tevin Butterfield, Bermuda Conference Worthy Student Award, Tristan Hill, Money Pete's Honors, Lucia Rivera, Highest Honors, Southern Adventist University $28,000 Award, also nominated for PricewaterhouseCoopers Head Start Award, Adrian Roach, Erica Smith, Jaden Tiart, Courtesy Queen, Honors, Southern Adventist University, $44,000 award. Hayden Williams, Honors, nominated for Price Waterhouse Cooper's Head Start Award. And finally, Serene Williams, Deloitte Limited Annual Student Award. I am delighted and humbled to say thank you to the entire Bermuda Institute family on behalf of the graduating class of 2020. We are grateful for everything you have taught us throughout our time here with you. When things got rough and we wanted to give up, you were there to encourage us. When things went well, you were there to celebrate us. We appreciate your commitment during our education at Bermuda Institute. You stood by us to the end. We couldn't have done this without you. There, are, there were many times when some of us wanted to give up on God and Christian education, but we didn't because you taught us that God didn't give up on us. All the lessons you have taught us over the years have molded us into amazing, talented young leaders that we have become. Please continue to keep us in your prayers and we will endeavor to make you proud of us, even after we leave these hallowed halls. Please allow us to say thank you as we leave this prayer with you. Heavenly Father, our teachers chose this career to make a difference in our lives for you. They love children and want them to grow into strong, healthy, educated, spiritual leaders. We pray that you will continue to equip, encourage, and strengthen them in their chosen profession as they continue to impact more lives for you after us. So Principal Edwards, please accept our gift of student desk for the elementary classrooms in appreciation for all that this team has done for us. Thank you very much to each one of you for all the love and kindness. May God richly bless you all. To our dearest teachers, on behalf of the graduating class of 2020, I would like to extend a warm appreciation to all of you, whether you taught us in elementary, middle, or high school. We truly appreciate everything you have done for us. We thank you for looking out for us when we needed it most. Sometimes we did not make it easy for you, but you stood by us and remained committed nonetheless. 
we know that you always had our best interests at heart. It is our prayer that God will continue to bless each one of you as you prepare more lives for his kingdom. Once again, thank you. Senora Simmons and Mr. Foster, we made it. Thank you for supporting us along the way and contributing to our success. You have inspired us to keep going even when we wanted to give up. Thank you for not just being our sponsors, but our friends and mentors. We will continue to make you proud as we depart from this school. We will never forget the impact that you have made on our lives. Los amamos. We love you. Graduates, today is your special day. It's a time of celebration. It suggests that you are moving on, whether it's moving up or moving forward or moving out, it's mobility. The challenge you face today and going forward in life must be anchored though in something, something unmovable. We at Bermuda Institute believe that we have provided you a rich education that is anchored that is solid and that is unmovable. You have been tested during this season of COVID-19 or coronavirus or, or whatever. This has been a stressful time for you all, a stressful time for all of us, and yet you have weathered it thus far. And you know why? Because somewhere in the remote parts of your being, you have been able to claim God's declaration over your life. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and plans for a future. People have fallen into despair. They have given up. Suicide and violence is, is on the rise. People are stressed and express daily their frustration, even having to stay home with family. Amazing, amazing indeed. But you, Bermuda Institute class of 2020, have claimed God's promise of hope and of a future. You have focused on your ultimate goal for your time at Bermuda Institute, that, that was to complete your academic and your spiritual growth and your spiritual goals and continue to press higher than the highest human thought can reach. You have put your face to the wind and one day you will achieve God's ideal for you and all of his children. Today is your time to celebrate in Jesus' name. Go forth remembering that promise. Write it on your heart to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and to give you a bright future. Congratulations and God bless you. Sometimes we cry, always friends nearby. 
Dear kind and gracious loving Father, thank you for blessing us with another day of life and for bringing us to this graduation day. Thank you for blessing us with the teachers, faculty, parents, and pastors who have made an impact in our lives. Without their support and guidance, this day would not have been possible. Please continue to bless them. We ask, Father, that you will continue to guide us in our life, in our life journey. Help us to make a positive impact on our communities so your name can be glorified. As we leave these hollow halls, we ask that you will walk with us as we trust you every step of the way. Thank you, God, for all that you have done for us thus far. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Four years of school to get to college Four years of that for a degree mm. It's easier to master knowledge Than it is to master me But I'm making this my graduation party It took a while for me to make it there When I showed up the ceremony started Cap up in the air Ooh. Oh, now I gotta graduate Can't stay here forever Gotta graduate All things pass away when I graduate All things become new when I graduate You've been watching the Bermuda Institute of Seventh-day Adventist 2020 Commencement Service. We pray you were blessed and we pray that you have a unique and now renewed interest in this great school. If you would like more information about this amazing institution we call Bermuda Institute, then feel free to call Sister Janet Smith at 238-1566. That's 238-1566. 1566 or you can email her at jansmith at bermudainstitute.bm that's j-a-n-s-m-i-t-h at bermudainstitute.bm we look forward to meeting you we look forward to servicing your children god bless you and have a wonderful day